RAD 140, something that in my opinion is going to be better than that of Anavar. Now this video is all for informational and educational purposes only, so only use it as such. If by chance you guys need anything, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. Also go to just halfwicked.com that will have all of your needs. First, we're gonna start with the benefits of RAD 140. Now you heard me in the start of the video mention how it is similar or better than Anavar. So RAD 140 is what I would deem to be a very similar compound to that of your DHT derivative steroids, which would be along the lines of Winstrol, Anavar, Masteron. So what do you normally reference when you hear those compounds is a dryness and a hardness, graininess to the muscle, more vascularity, drop in body fat percentage, essentially the contest prep or photo shoot type of drugs. For your lab rat, if you were to utilize RAD 140, the results are gonna be very similar to that of that list of the DHT compounds. Obviously, extremely popular for people that are wanting to, in the summer months, get diced even put on some strength, more leanness, maybe have abs for the first time. But it definitely should also be known that RAD 140 is not just like a fat burner. It's not just gonna melt fat. Of course, diet is gonna be staple before ever utilizing anything. So for your lab rat, just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, when I'm saying it's better than that of Anavar, it's mainly because Anavar isn't as strong as a lot of people say. It is still very strong, and I would say for the females that are watching, Anavar is going to be probably one of the best contest prep type of compounds out there. Now, with that being said for men, just because of the cost, if you are actually to get legit pharmacy grade Anavar, it's gonna be very expensive. And if you're, for whatever reason, going the underground lab route, yeah, you're gonna get it cheaper, but it's still more expensive, especially for the dosages you'd wanna to run to be something comparably more strong or something that has the same kind of results, but at a fraction of the cost. So RAD 140, a much lower dosage. You are also like, let's say you take around the same dosage, you're gonna get much more results at a fraction of the cost, which is a huge caveat to many lab rats that are out there. Also, in my opinion, the side effects were less on my lab rat with RAD 140 compared to Anavar. Not that there is at all a lot with Anavar, but I did experience through my blood work more suppression with Anavar. I did notice an increase in more liver toxicity or raising my liver enzymes. Yeah, just back to the cost, to be honest, because the results were better. I'm gonna be honest with RAD 140 with the vascularity, the strength output, the actual conditioning or muscle chiseling was better for my lab rat with RAD 140 than that of Anavar. Jumping into the dosage that lab rats should expect with RAD 140 is I'm always on the air or the side more so of caution. And what I mean by that is no matter what I do in life, if it's drinking alcohol, eh, I mean, I've, I've made mistakes through my life, but the point I'm getting at is start low, assess your tolerance and then ramp up. When you start low, if you're still getting progress results, stay there as long as possible. Why would you not? Because your body can only grow so quick. And as long as you're not plateaued, I don't know why you wouldn't be happy with still putting on muscle, putting on good quality size. Stay there as long as possible. The only time I think people should ever increase the dosage of anything is going to be once you plateau and your body physically cannot get any better. Then that's a choice you can make. You know, do I wanna continue that? Maybe change things up and try ever so slightly for something better, or do I wanna go the unnatural route? Obviously, most people are probably probably going to go with the unnatural route just because most people are never satisfied with their physiques because the first day you work out is the first day you forever have body dysmorphia. So when we're talking about the low dosage, I say for most male lab rats that are out there, it would be around the 10 milligram mark. And that could be run all the way up to what I found with my lab rat and my personal experience up to the 30 milligram mark. I did try up to 50 milligrams a day and I would always do that pre-workout. But with 50 milligrams, I did notice an increase in the side effects. I didn't notice a huge increase in the actual gains that were being made from the cycle. So I found the 30 milligram mark to be really more so the sweet spot. And I'm a bigger guy. I'm 6'4", usually when I used to compete and everything, I was around the 240 to 260 range. Of course, off season, more around 260. Didn't have side effects, at least for me, um, which we will talk about in a moment for maybe other people out there, potentially what could happen. I know on my experience with my lab rat, no side effects. Suppression, but that didn't really matter to me because I knew I was going to be getting on TRT. So there was no point in me really caring about bouncing my natural testosterone levels back after cycle. But because it is suppressive, without a doubt, run post-cycle therapy, unless you are on, like you heard me mention, TRT or some foreign source of testosterone coming in where you wouldn't need it. But if you are natural and you wanna go back to being potentially natural, get your natural levels back, PCT is an absolute must in my opinion. I always found that through my blood work, you could do the twice a day, 
which I do for a lot of stuff. Sometimes you can do that in the morning and night. That's what I would recommend, but you could also get by with the once a day. Another big question is the cycle length of time, which I also wanted to lump some together with what other compounds could be potentially run with RAD140, because when we're talking about SARMs, SARMs are phenomenal for the reason of a lot of them have a couple advantages, and then they pair really well with other ones that are out there for other advantages, because there's not gonna be a single thing out there, whether we're talking your traditional anabolics, peptides, prohormones, that is an all-encompassing, you get everything that you could ever want want from one pill, one injection. It's just not gonna happen, at least yet, who knows? Maybe some Captain America type serum or something will come out. But at least at the moment, you normally need multiple things. So your traditional cycles would be like a testosterone with a growth hormone with another like anabolic in there, maybe Anavar, D-ball, something along those lines. So when you're talking about SARMs, you could have RAD140 with Cardarine, which is your PPAR GW501516 which is essentially just your endurance enhancer, more fat loss. So when you hear the RAD140 benefits that we talked about then paired with the cartering, you're getting this really synergistic effect of just fat melting off, making your dieting so much easier. You're getting chiseled, you're getting diced. And then also your cardio because of the cartering is going through the roof. Now jumping back to the cycle length of time, RAD140 is similar to your other traditional anabolics. I would say the eight to 12 week mark is always gonna be good. Just like with aspirin, ibuprofen, um, over-the-counter medications, the body is incredibly smart. So the longer you run something, your body is gonna get used to it and build up a tolerance. You've probably heard the word tolerance, I assume. If you're drinking alcohol, you normally, on a frequent basis, you build up a tolerance, thus meaning you need more. So same thing when you were talking about cycle is around the eight to 12 week mark, if you start to push it longer, you're gonna plateau. So what that means is you either need to come off, cycle off the compounds, do your post-cycle therapy and allow your levels to recover so that then you can start another cycle at a later period or you need to increase the dosage now the thing that comes with the second option of increasing the dosage you're going to run into more side effects you're going to run into more liver toxicity because you're doing it longer you're not giving your body that break and then of course as you heard me mention you're spending more money more time and the longer you do a cycle you should cycle off. I know a lot of people have an incredibly hard time with the cycling off part. You could always do a shorter span of time, like if you wanted a four week, five week. I would just say the optimal time to really get the maximum growth you want out of it before you start to dwindle into the realm of the side effects is the eight to 12 week mark. And lastly, for the RAD140 video, I wanted to end with the side effects because I do want everyone to not only know the good stuff and then you know not be aware of anything bad that could potentially happen, even though it never happened with my lab rat. The experiences that I've heard from RAD140 is some people can experience some hair loss that is very individual based. Maybe you have a family history of male pattern baldness and you are susceptible to it. You already have a receding hairline, uh, maybe error on the side of caution or for your lab rat, you could try it. And then if you start to notice an increase in the hair loss, you could always come off and then that will subside. It hasn't happened to me, but I have seen it happen to a couple people that are out there. And also who knows what dosage they were running, right? They could have been running 70 milligrams, 100 milligrams of RAD140 a day. The second one is definitely going to be liver toxicity or raising liver enzymes. I, I hate when pe as people say SARMs are incredibly safe. They have no side effects, that there's nothing that could ever go wrong. I've seen on my own personal lab work, it does raise liver enzymes. Is it gonna be like your traditional methylated steroids, like your Anavar that's oral or Anadrol, the A-bombs that are extremely extremely liver toxic, no, but it is still gonna raise your liver enzymes based on what I've seen. I have noticed also with myself and some other people out there, similar to Winstrol, you've heard maybe it dries out the joints where your joints can be kind of achy or painful shoulders and stuff might be tight or your elbows, your knees. I have experienced that with RAD140 just because of that dryness, which is good if you're wanting to compete and you want that like really vascular, paper thin type of skin where you can like peel it off and you're seeing all the detail. It's a very good drying compound, but because it's drying you out under the skin and making the muscles more visible, it's also drying out your joints and everything. Is that at all a horrible one? No, it's nothing even close or comparable to that of Winstrol, I would say oral, where that dries you out immensely, but it does still, it could potentially have that effect. There's some people that will never experience any side effects in their life. Some people may, you know, pop up with some acne or something, you know, there's just random variables. Not everyone is the same. So what might work for my lab rat isn't gonna work for your lab rat. And that is where unfortunately trial and error kind of comes into play. And if you guys need anything, 
check out the link in the description down below. You guys can also stay updated on the Instagram account, Half Wicked Labs. Shoot me a DM, ask me a question, and I hope you guys got some enjoyment out of the video, maybe learn something about RAD 140. I will catch you in the next one.